You're welcome to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional today, Sunday, November 21st, 2021. The topic today says, the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. Let us pray. Our Father, we worship your most holy name. We thank you for life. We ask that as we study your word, Holy Spirit divine, you will teach us yourself. And let your name be glorified in our lives. And let, O oh Lord, us, let us give glory to you, O oh Lord, in all that we do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We bless you, Lord. And we say you're welcome once again. It's the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. And the topic we have says the tongue is a fire. We read in James chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. As our Bible reading, and I read in the King James Version. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member, and posted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue amongst our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith cause we men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. The Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. We'll be discussing the Bible reading shortly, but we will proceed to look at our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is taken from Proverbs 15, verse 1. Proverbs 15, 1, and it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Now, Apostle James captures the extent to which the tongue can go in destroying a person's destiny in today's Bible reading. Aptly, and we saw that in the sixth verse of James chapter 3, saying the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Now, the tongue indeed is a fire, and it must be controlled. We know that fire can be destructive and can be productive. When fire is controlled, it will be productive. When fire is not controlled, it becomes destructive. It tells us that if though the tongue is a fire, it is the control of the tongue that then will determine if what proceeds from our tongues will be constructive, will be productive, or if what will proceed will be destructive. I'm certain that we will choose to be constructive and productive with our tongues in Jesus' name. Now, the tongue was further described as an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Thankfully, the Lord Jesus has told us that if we take any drink that is deadly, it shall by no means hurt us. Mark 16, 18. Therefore, we, the Lord has already helped us to overcome all the poison and the death in the tongue. It's just for us to activate our authority over it and put it in check by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, the story was told of a woman, and it's an interesting story, who was always having issues, um, having quarrels with her husband. And then she went to meet a relative who's an elderly person and says, please, I need your help and counsel. And the elderly, elderly person, relative, gave this woman a pebble, a stone. 
smoked one and said, okay, whenever you're having disagreements with your husband and husband and he's um, picking a quarrel with you, put the stone in your mouth and begin to, to lick it and begin to suck on it with your mouth closed. You will begin to see changes. And of course, she started to do this. And interestingly, changes started occurring. The husband started laying off picking quarrels and things improved tremendously in her home. So she ran back to the relative and uh, this elderly relative and said, wow, this stone you gave me worked wonders. Believe me, once I start sucking on it, my husband even now doesn't even you know, look for trouble with me anymore and all our things have improved. And the person laughed and said, well, it was just an ordinary stone I gave to you. What has happened is by the time when you're sucking on the stone and you're quiet, over a period of time, your husband too will see. I mean, you know, he's not a crazy person. Your husband too will see that you are now, you know, submissive and you 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 would weigh your words before you speak back and not just speak out of anger. Of course, not saying the women should not speak or should not have conversations with their husbands, but then it will be controlled. You know, the stone helped her control that tongue, and they were remarkable results from in our home, positive results in our home. Now, Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words are like honeycomb and they are health to the bones. It therefore means that words that are unpleasant are what? Sickness to the bones. And we know when the bone is dried up, and then well, what else is left of the human? And it, I mean, this is figurative. It's not even speaking to the bones itself. It's speaking to the essence of man. So it's important that we take note that our tongues should be used productively, constructively, and not negatively. All children of God must learn to control their tongues as there is a time to talk and there's a, kind, a time to keep silent. Reference Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7. And finally, when we talk, our words must be fitly spoken. Our words must be fitly spoken. You know, like pearls in the picture of silver. So we see that in Proverbs 25, 11. Our words should be fit for the due season. We should seek the grace and the face of the Lord to help us know what to say at the right time and what not to say at all. The Lord created the tongue. So if you are to control it, no matter how unruly it might have been described, the Lord has not con created what he cannot control. And the Spirit of the Lord lives within us. So it then means that we can control the, our tongues through the power of the maker of the tongue who then is dwelling in you. However, if the Lord is not dwelling in you, then there is no way you can tame your tongue. There is no way you can control it. And the fire of the tongue will then first start by destroying the, the owner of the tongue, the, the, the person, the, the host, let me say, the host of the tongue, which is the person who's, who bears the tongue in his mouth. It will destroy the person first before it even destroys others. If you want to avoid this, I think the best thing to do and the only way out of this really is to invite the maker of the tongue to come into your life, to dwell in you and then help you to tame your tongue so it can be controlled and be productive for you because you can actually prophesy good things and they will come to pass in your life. And that by so doing when this is supported and, and based upon the power of the Lord. So why don't you say this prayer to invite the Lord into your life and say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart. Come dwell in me. Write my name in the book of life. Wash my sins away. And help me, O oh Lord, to put my tongue under control and to make it productive to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you have said that prayer, congratulations. I'm sure that your name is now written in the book of life. A party ongoing in heaven over you right now. And you've been welcome into the family of God. And I leave us with this prayer point that says, Help me, Lord, to bridle my tongue at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. It's important that we control our tongues just the same way 
you know, the horse is controlled by the by the by its mouth and how the sheep is controlled by a small helm, you know, small rudder, and then it moves the entire ship. That is how the tongue is as well onto us. And as you can control it and and use it productively, you will begin to see great positive results in your lives and the lives of those around you. Thank you for listening. God bless you.